All right, Jabo, say good morning. Let us begin. I'm going to begin by thanking our sponsors for this morning's shear. To thank our Talmud Torah sponsors, Shmuley and Libudinovitz, for dedicating all the Shurman Joshos this month in memory of Shmuley's father, Harav Peres, Avram, Ben Rav, Yom, and Moshe. Our week of learning sponsors, Ira Miriam Grossman, in commemoration of the Arsite of Ira's mother, Freda Bas Shmuel, and... But those are our sponsors. We'll say we thank all of our sponsors for their dedication, for their generosity. We hope all of the Neshamas have an Aliyah and the families a Nechama. And I will say with that, let us begin. We have a beautiful, beautiful daf ahead of us today. Actually, a lot to do today. Today's daf is Chaf Beis 22. We are picking up on Chaf Aleph Amad Beis 21b. And we are picking up 22 lines up from the bottom. Says the Gemara. Maskif la Ravashi. So we'll say, if you remember again, we ended up yesterday's daf with the Gemara t- telling us that there are three lessons, three halachas derived from the previous sugya. Halacha number one, aid na'asad dayon, that an aid, a witness, has the ability to morph into a judge. Now halacha number two, dayonan hamakirin chasimus de aidim enun tzuchin lahad bifneem. If the judges themselves recognize the signatures of the witnesses, there, there doesn't need to be any additional testimonial corroboration. You don't need witnesses to testify about the signatures. And the last thing, And we also learned that if any of the judges do not recognize the signatures of the witnesses, we need to testify in the presence of each of those judges who are not yet knowledgeable or do not yet know about the authenticity of the signatures. Good. Says the Gimar Maskif Ravashi. So Ravashi raises a kasha, and he says as follows. Bishlama Eidna Sadayon Shaminon Minei. And I will say, remember again, all of this was also learned out from the story that the Gimar recorded. So the Gimar now, now says as follows. The Gimar now says, I'm sorry. So the Gemara now says, So Bishlama, Bishlama Eid Nasadayin Shamina Minei. So I understand how you could learn out the concept that the aid could become a Dayon from the previous story that was explicit in the story. To which the Gemara says, Ela Dayonan Hamakir and Chasimo Sadea Eidin, Ein Srich and Lahaid Bifnehem. But Allah Almighty said the notion that if a Dayon recognizes a signature, there doesn't need to be any additional testimony from witnesses to corroborate the authenticity of the signature. Maybe you can't bring that out from that previous story. Why? Dilma, the Olam Eimelachatzrichen. Maybe really you do need the shiny hacha to come a kaima hagada bechad. Maybe they're both saying, remember again, maybe the previous case was different. Remember again, I'm both saying, in the case that we mentioned yesterday, two out of the three Dayonin recognized the signature. The third, the signatures, the third did not. So maybe again in that case, at the end of the day, you did have two of the Dayonim testifying in the presence of the third. Therefore, there was some level of testimony. And I will say about the idea that if the Dayonim do not recognize the signatures, so you have to testify in the presence of each of the Dayonim. Dilma, the Olam, Eimelacha, Insuichen. Maybe in general, I would say you actually don't need to do that. The shiny hacha, this case was different. Why? Dilma kamakai, dil, I'm sorry, the shiny hacha, dilo kamakai mahagada klau. Because if you don't have any type of testimony, then lemaisa, then lemaisa, well, let me say it differently. If the two would not have testified in front of the one, then halacha lemaisa, there would be no form of testimony at all. Okay, so say, so interestingly enough, interestingly enough, the Gemara wants to highlight these three halachas, these three halachas, but yet the Gemara challenges these three halachos and telling us you can't necessarily derive it from the story. Now we'll say, as we're going to see further, we will see the concept of Eid Na'asadayon is an interestingly contested idea. What I will point out, Rabbi Osai, is that Halacha Lamaisa, the one piece that we absolutely do walk away with is if Dayanim recognize the signatures, there is no need for additional testimony. That is Halacha Lamaisa. And that is incredibly important as well. So again, the only time we're going to need witnesses to testify to the authenticity of the signatures is in a situation where Halakha Lamaisa, the Yanam themselves don't recognize it. But if they recognize it, we're good to go. Says the Gemara Baiter. 
Says the Gemara right there. Um, good. Yosef Rabbi Abba the Kamer Leil Hashmaita the Eid Nasad Dayan. So Rabbi Abba was going ahead and was telling over this concept that an Eid could morph into a Dayan, which I will say, if you think about it, is a, is a profound idea, right? An Eid, an Eid could become a Dayan. So the Gemara says, Isvera Safra the Rabbi Abba. So Rav Safra raised the question of Rabbi Abba, and he said. Ra'u shlo shavein beizdin. So I'll say, we'll ask a kasha from Misachas Rosh Hashanah. Listen to this case. Let's say three people saw the new moon. Three people saw the new moon. Ru'a shlo shavein beizdin. And ultimately, again, obviously, so three people saw the moon, and the three people who saw the moon also happened to be a beizdin. They happened to be a beizdin. So what's the halacha? They both say, remember again, you need a based in to be Makadesh the Chodesh. In general, to sanctify the new month, you need two things. You need two witnesses who saw the new moon, and they need to give over that testimony in front of a based in. So now, interestingly enough, what do you have over here? You have three people who happen to be a based in who saw the new moon together. So what should we do? Here we go. So Yam Dushnayim Biyashiv Mechavrem Eitzla Yochid. So what happens? Two of the three essentially act as the witnesses. They act as the witnesses. So two of the three, two of the two separate from the group, they become the witnesses. They add on two more Dayanim, two more judges, via Idu Bifnehem, and ultimately again they give their testimony, the Yomru, Mekudash, Mekudash. And then after the two give their testimony, then the three, and also remember again, the three who are now the new Beisdin are constituted of the one earlier Dayan, and two new additional Dayanim. So then the new basin could say, Mekudosh, Mekudosh. The new month is sanctified. Why? She'in hayochid ne'eman ayyidei atzmo. Because at the end of the day, an individual, an individual is halacha lamaisa, not believed on his own. Okay. So what say? Says, I don't understand. But if you hold that an aid could become a Dayan, lamali kulihai, why do you need this whole process? So we'll say, so remember again, j- just to review, the process in Rosh Hashanah is you have a based in that sees the new moon. They saw it together. So three guys, three, a based in of three saw the new moon together. Now, what do we need? We need two things. I need testimony and I need a based in, right? The testimony, the testimony is necessary to ascertain that there's the new moon and the based in is necessary to declare the new month. So what do we do? So two, Two, separate themselves out from the Beisdin and become the Edim. Now we're left with only one Dayon. So we add on two more Dayonim, two more Dayonim. So now again, the two witnesses, the two quote-unquote witnesses, will go out and give testimony in front of, in front of the two Dayonim. So it says the Gemara, says the Gemara, So if you hold the Halacha Dayon, then why do you need this whole thing? Why do you need this whole thing? To which the Gimara says, Just go ahead and let them stay in their place and let them be Mekadesh the Chodesh. In other words, I will say, if an Eidna said Dayon, then just go ahead and do this. Let, the two, let two guys give testimony, right? So in that moment, in that moment, what are they? They're Edim. And in the next moment, then what? Then what? Let them morph into Dayonim. In other words, and you could use the same pool of three for everything to give testimony. And then again, after they give testimony, they could morph into Dayanim and they could be the very basin that is Makadish the Chodesh. Why is there a need to go ahead and halacha lamaisa? Why is there a need halacha lamaisa to enfranchise more people onto a basin? To which the Gemara says, Amrlei, afle didi kashili. So he said, You know what? The truth is, I had the same kasha. So I will say, and all of these rabbis asked the question. And ultimately, again, they asked the question to Rav. Right? They went up the ladder, went to Rav, and what did Rav say? Apples and oranges. Kiddush Hachodesh, I will say, Eidos Hachodesh is a Doraisa. It's a Doraisa. Hanoch Eidos Hachodesh Doraisa. The Kiyam Shtaras Dirabanan. Oh, to which the Gemara says, no, 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 you're making a, Rav says, you're making a profound mistake. You're treating all cases of testimony the same, right? That they're all, that they're all one unit, but it's not true. It's not true. In fact, Halacha Lamaisa, again, there are different forms of Eidos. Up until now, what have we been talking about, Rav Osei? Kiyam Shtaras. The concept of Kiyam Shtaras is a Dirabanan, right? Remember again, Rav Osei, 
Midaraisa, if you have a star, star is a star is a star. Right? Midrabanam is a concept that halacha la if the star is challenged, so there's a way to go ahead and certify the star. That process is called kiyam staras. What do you need for kiyam staras? So you need a couple of different things. Either you need, te- well, there's a machlokas exactly what you need. But for our purposes, what you need is a bezdin to go ahead and uphold the star through testimony. So I need dayonim and I need edim. Since it's the Rabbanon, Chazal said, you could use the same pool for everything. Aid Naaseh Dayon. So you could have guys who act as witnesses and then morph into judges. In Eidos HaChodesh, which is Eidos Da'oraisa, where Mid Da'oraisa, Rabbi Mid Da'oraisa, I need Aidim, and I also need a Beisdim. In that case, we do not say Aid Naaseh Dayon. In that case, you need two distinct groups of Dayanim and Edim, and therefore Abosai, in the example that we gave, when the group of three who are abased and see the new moon, two separate themselves, they become Edim. And once they become Edim, they can no longer be what? Dayanim. So we need to add on two more to make the Dayan group. So therefore Abosai, what, really incredible, what, what comes out of here Abosai, therefore is Halach al what? We hold Eid Na'asa Dayan, but only in what case? Only what case? Drabanans. But mid the we do not hold of Eid Nasa Dayon. Incredible, incredible. Says the Gemara, Amrabi Abba, Amrav, Huna Amrav. Shlosha Shiyashfu Lekayim Es Ashtar. We will say, listen to this case. Three people sit down to go ahead and certify a document. So we will say, so remember again, this is now a Beisdin. So a be- let's just understand what's happening over here. A Beisdin is coming to sit down to go ahead and certify a document. They're going to work through this process and certify that the document is in fact a legitimate document. Okay, and remember again, what's going to be the result of that process? What's the result of that process? What we call a handpick, right? Or an asharta. We're going to go, an actual certification, a certification that is written on the document itself. That's what we're going to do. So the three sat down. The kara ir or alechad mehem, but someone raised an objection or an objection was raised about one of them, about one of them, so what was I say now? Essentially, in a, the type of objection we're talking about is what kind of objection? The type of ob- objection that would invalidate this person from serving as a dayan. At least that's what we assume. So I say, now what do I do? So the Gemara says, okay, not a problem. So the Gemara says, Ad shalo chasmu alav v'chosim. Now I will say, here's the interesting case. The, we're going to we're going to clarify this in just a moment. But as you see, here's what's happening. We've got Ruvain, Shimon, and Levi. Right? They're sitting down to certify a document. As you're sitting down in the certification process, an objection is raised about the legitimacy or, or fitness of Ruvain. It happens to be that Shimon and Levi know that the objection is, is not a valid objection. So, and they, they could testify, in other words, a lot of testimony going on over here. They could testify to the kashras of Ruvain. So the Gemara says, if they have not yet signed the certification, the henpik, the asharta, if they have not yet signed it, achlo chasmu they could testify on behalf of Ruvain's behalf, certifying that Ruvain himself is fit to serve as a dayan, and then they could all sign on the certification on the henpik. Misha chasmu, however, if they signed the certification and then the objection was raised, ein mi'idin alav. Then I will say at that point in time, they can no longer testify about Ruvain. Why can't they testify about Ruvain? Why not? Because I will say, here's the problem. The problem is now the testimony looks biased. Because here, Shimon and Levi are signed onto a certification together with Ruvain. So the truth is, it's going to be embarrassing for them and erode their personal legitimacy if Halacha Lamaisa Ruvain is turned, it turns out to be unfit forget to give this aid to be a dayon. So therefore we can't trust what they say because they may just tr- be trying to save their own reputation. If you look at Rashi, Rashi says, Now at this point in time, they're in Ogea Be'edos, right? They have a vested interest in the testimony. Because it's embarrassing for them to be part of a certification together with someone who is apostle. Okay, so pretty straightforward. So the Gemara says, Ir er demais. Let's talk about this a little bit. When we talk about the fact that Ruvain, there's an objection raised against Ruvain. What type of objection? I ir er de gazlanusa. So I will say, if somebody comes forward and says, Ruvain is a gazlan. You know this dayan, this dayan, this dayan, 
He, he's in a bezler. He runs a Ponzi scheme. Right? He went ahead and he stole money. He stole money. He's a gazlon. He's a gazlon. So the Gemara says, Top of Chav Bezim with Aleph. Treyu Treyu so they both say, so here's the problem. Here's the problem. So now let's say Ruven, Shimon, and Levi are sitting together. They're about to certify the document. Right? So now what's happened? So, guys, so, so A and B come forward and say, Ruven is unfit. He's a gazlan. Okay, so now what's going to happen? Shimon and Levi are going to come along and say, what? He's not a gazlan? So, okay, let's say, they come, no, he's not, it's not true. He's not a gazlan. Okay, we'll say, what do we call this in halacha? Treyu Trey. And we'll say, what's Treyu Trey? Two witnesses against two witnesses. See, here's the problem. Two witnesses against two witnesses are not going to be enough to restore Ruvain's Cheska's Kashros. Look at Rashi, Tap Rashi, Anchaf Bezim with Aleph. So, Ki Amri Lo Gazal Havalu Trey Utrey, Velo Miskasher Bahachi. I will say, so remember again, so let, let's go back for just a moment. What's happening over here? Ruvain, Shimon, and Levi are a Bezdin. They're sitting down together to certify a document, right? Based on the previous Sugya, they recognize the, the signatures on the document, so they can go ahead and certify it on their own. They don't need additional testimony. As they're going through this process, someone or two other guys come in, A and B come in and say, Ruvain is a thief. He's a Gazlan. He's a Gazlan. So what do the Raisa say? If Shimon and Levi know it's not true, as long as it's before they signed the, as long as before they signed the certification, they could testify on Ruvain's behalf and restore Ruvain's Cheska's kashrus. To which the Gemara says, "Why? That's not true. If A and B come along and say Ruvain's a gazlan, but Ruvain and Shimon, the other two guys on the base, and say no, he's not, that's two against two. Two against two doesn't restore your Cheska's kashrus." Two against two prevents anything from happening, right? Two against two prevents the claim from, from proceeding, but Lamaisa, but Lamaisa, the Cheska's cash was not necessarily restored. To which the Gemara says, E ir de Oh, so maybe, maybe A and B are coming along, and what are they testifying about? They're testifying that, that Ruvain is unfit genealogically, right? He's, 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 he's a mamzer. He's a mamzer. He's an ever. The truth is, mamzer is not a good example because mamzer actually would be fit to serve on odds, all right? But he's an ever, as she says over here. He's an ever. He's an ever. Ultimately, again, right? He's an ever, and therefore, again, halacha lemaisa, halacha lemaisa. He's not fit to serve on the basin. So if that's the, if that's the, and what, and what I will say now. So now, let's play this out. So, so, so A and B come along and say that Ruben, Ruben is an ever, and now Shimon and Levi come along and say what, what? No, he's not. So the Gemara says, I don't understand. In this case over here, so the Gemara says, if this case over here, I'm sorry, mishpacha gilui milsa ba'amu. See, I will say, when you make a genealogical claim against someone, the truth is, that is actually, how do you resolve that claim? How do you resolve the claim? How do you resolve it? You investigate. You investigate. In other words, I will say, that's the geneal- interesting of genealogical claims are the type of things that edos tells us that there's an issue that needs to be investigated. But Lamaisa, but Lamaisa, that is something that we can clarify. So Allah says somebody raises, somebody walks into Basin and says, Ruvay Nadayan is an Eved. Okay, the fact that Shimon Levi is saying, no, he's not, that doesn't do anything for us. We're now going to have to investigate and get to the bottom of it. To which the Gemara says, you're right. The Olam Eimelecha Ir de Gazlanusa. Listen to this, I'll say, this is such a beautiful Gemara. Here is the case. Here we go. Get ready. Get ready. Ruvain, Shimon, and Levi are based in, they're sitting down certifying a document as they're in the process of certification, process of certification, before they've, signed, before they've signed the certification. A and B, two more witnesses walk in. They say Ruvain is a gazlon, he's a thief, unfit to go ahead and engage in this process. And I will say, what does Shimon and Levi say? Get ready for this. Vika Amri, honey, Ruvain and Shimon say, Yadinan Beid the Avid Shuvah. Wow, wow. Ruven and Shimon say, okay, you're right, you're right. Ruven, Ruven was a thief. He was a thief, but we happen to know that Halach Alamaisa, Halach Alamaisa, he did Shuvah. He did Shuvah. Now, boss, you ask yourself, how could you know that someone did Shuvah? So Rashi says over here, right across in Rashi, the Avad Shuvah, the Heshevas Hagizela. He returned the stolen item. See, I will say that's why the Gemara says very something very specific over here. You see, with gezel, with theft, with theft, you can know whether or not someone did shuvah or not. Now, granted, 
There's two parts to tshuva. There is behavioral tshuva and ultimately emotional or spiritual tshuva. You can't necessarily know if someone did emotional or spiritual tshuva. But Lamaise, if somebody stole an object, I can know whether or not they returned it. So I will say, this is, this is actually pretty amazing. So therefore, again, Allah Lamaisa, what the Gemara is suggesting is like this. Now, now we understand the Braisa. So Ruben and Shimon Alevi are, are a basin. They're sitting down to certify a document. A and B roll in. Ruben's unfit. He's a gazlon. He's a gazlon. Shimon and Levi happen to know that Reuven did tshuva. So they want to say, no, Reuven did tshuva. So they say, what's that, Locha? Can they restore Reuven's legitimacy and finish the process of Kiyam Shtaras? To which the Gemara says, it depends. What does it depend on? Did they already sign the certification or not? If they have not yet signed the certification, then Shimon and Levi will be believed to testify on Reuven's behalf, and Talach al the certification could proceed as planned. If, however, the certification was already signed, we no longer accept Reuven and Shimon's testimony. Why? They're no Gea Bedavar. Because now Rabbi say they have a vested interest in clearing Ruvain's name because they're signed on a document together with him. Incredible. On Rabbi Zera, Hamilsim Rabbi Abba Shmiele. So Rabbi Zera said, I heard this. I heard this thing from Rabbi Abba. Ve'ilav Rabbi Abba demin Akko shachachta. And were it not from Rabbi Abba, from Rabbi Abba of Akko, I would have forgotten it. In other words, had he, had he not reminded me, right, I would have forgotten it. I will say, here we go, listen to this halacha. I will say, but just before we go on, I find it quite amazing. I will say, if you think about this previous Gemara, just understand what the Gemara is talking about over here. You have three guys who are sitting on a basin, right? Now, granted, this is not the Sanhedrin Agadol over here, but Lamai said, it's a basin. It's a based in. And what happens? Shimon and Levi know that Ruvain is a thief, or Ruvain was a thief. And they also know that Ruvain did tshuva. I will say, you know, sometimes, sometimes what keeps us from making the changes we need to make is embarrassment in front of others. Right? Because sometimes if I change certain things about my life, other people, oh, certain things about my life, other people may find out about things that I did do, behaviors I did engage in, lifestyles I did have. And so often, again, people finding out about things prevents me from making the necessary changes I need to make. And sometimes what we see over here is that shuva requires a certain degree of personalistic bravery. That sometimes a person has to be able to say, you know, what people know or people don't know doesn't really make a difference. What matters is that I become the best version of me. Here, Ruvain is sitting on a basin. Isn't this a great thing? Think about it. Ruvain is sitting on a basin. Shimon and Levi know that he was a thief. They know it. They know it. But they also know that he became a Balchuva. And I will say, more important than them knowing that he was a thief was them knowing that he was a Balchuva. It's a pretty, it's, sometimes you have to worry a lot less about what other people think and what, or what other people will think and just focus on doing the right thing for ourselves. I know that I have to be Haley. I know that I have to become Kaddish. I know that I have to become special. I know that I have to become better. I, this one's going to say this and this one's going to say that. It doesn't make a difference. Do what you have to do in your Abodas Hashem. Do what you have to do in your personalistic evolution. Become the best version of you. What people will say, they'll say. But at the end of the day, I will say, what do you see? At the end of the day, when you make the necessary changes in life, People respect you for it. You see, I will say, you'd be tempted to say, how many of us would sit on a basin with a guy who I know was a thief and became a Balchuva? Not me. Not me. Even though I'm, not, I'm no tzaddik, but I wouldn't want to do it. And yet, you see, what do you see over here? Shimon and Levi respected him for it. They, they, know, they know his past. They know his past. But more important than his past, they know his present. And his present, his present is that he's a Balchuva. And when someone's a Balchuva, there is no greater title, no greater accolade in life than we call the Baal Tshuva. Incredible. The Gemara goes weiter. So I'll say, here we go. Another interesting case. Three people, three people were, were sitting down to go ahead and certify a shtar. So, we'll say, so again, this is the Beisdin. So this is now a Beisdin certifying a document without Eidos, without Eidos. They recognize the signatures. So Gimel Shiyosh, Lekayim Es Ashtar, Umeis Echad Mehem, and one of them died, Tzrichin Lemechtav, they have to write, Bemosav Tlas Sahavina, Vechad Leshavi. Now we'll say, j- just to illustrate what the problem is with this case. Not the problem, but, but what's going on over here. Ruvain, Shimon, and Levi, sat, they're a Beisdin. Again, no one's a thief. Everyone's a Baal Tshuva, because it should all be Bali Tshuva. Right? And they're sitting down to certify a document. They're going through the whole process. Document is good to go. 
right before they sign, Ruvain dies. Ruvain dies. So we will say, so now the, the certification is valid because the certification was done with a basin of three. So we're, we're, we're good on that level. The shayla now is, is how do we sign this document? You obviously can't sign Ruvain's name, Ruvain's dead. So Lamaisa, what do we do? So the Gemara gives a formulation. What's the formulation? They should say, they should say, we were a group of three, and one is no longer. And one is no longer, right? So I'll say, so ultimately, so this is, what do people see? What do people see when they read that certification? What they see is the actual certification itself was done with a group of three. A proper certification with three was done at the end of the day. But Lamaisa, by the time it came time to signing it, one was no longer, one had passed away. Alternatively, if you wrote the following, we'll say you could also write, this document came before a based in. This document came before a basin. Then I'll say, if you write this document came before a basin, that's enough. Why? Because what does a basin automatically what does a basin automatically mean? Three. Three. So I'll say the idea over here is the Gemara is saying is the certification, which first of all I'll say one important talah, huh? which the Gemara is teaching us, which is apparently that if you have a basin of three sitting to certify a document, and they went through the process of certification, but one dies before signing, the certification is still valid. But somehow, so, but here's the problem. The certification is valuable, but where do you run into a problem? Where do you run into a problem? How many signatures are you gonna have on the certification? Only two. So the verbiage of the certification has to reflect the fact that it was done in the presence of three. So now we have two possibilities. Possibility A is ultimately, again, to write, the most of plus Avina, this document was certified in front of three, but one is no longer. Sounds very poetic, right? But one is no longer. That's one possibility. Or possibility number three is just to say this document was certified in the presence of a based in. Ah, you only have two signatures. All right, people will understand between the lines what happened that one of the Dayana must have died. So the Gemara says, the Dilma based in Chatzafu. But one second, maybe it's a Chutzpadik based in. So we'll say, what's a Chutzpadik based in? Watch this. Okay, Shmuel, Dr. Shmuel, Shnaim Shadanu Dinehem Din. Shmuel says, it's actually quite interesting. Shmuel says that Meikra Din, you could have two people act as a based in. You could have two people act as a based in. Ela Shenikra based in Chatsuf. But Shmuel says they're called the Chutzpadik based in. So technically speaking, if you have a based in that of two that adjudicates, what they adjudicate stands, but they're called the Chutzpadik based in. Dixiv, Bey, I'm sorry. So therefore, I will say, so that, here's the problem. So maybe, maybe when you have a document that says, this certification that says, this certification was done in the presence of based in, people, and you have two signatures, people will say, oh, so you see from here that what? A based in of two works, but a based in of two is called the chutzpedik based in, to which the Gemara says, dechsiv bey, beidina dirab no ashi. It says in the document, to use the wording, a based in like the based in of rab no ashi, or rab ashi. And we'll say, look at Rashi, actually right across, ki bey, ki beidina dirab no ashi, so in other words, I will say, you add in some type of verbiage that essentially says this based in operates in accordance with the standards of, of, of Bate Din. Right? Like, like, the, like this, this based in operated like the based in of Ravashi. And therefore what you're doing is you're certifying that this was a based in of what? A based in of three. Just happens to be one of the Dayanim died before they could sign on the document. Kiddush Gemara says, I vidomo durabanan de bear of Ashi, Kiddush Mo Svirlu, Dixiv be va amarlana rabna Ashi. So we'll say maybe, maybe they hold like Shmuel, that ultimately again a based in of two ultimately could work as well. To which again the document says, va amarlana rabna Ashi. Rashi says, Liz da kuke ye, Liz da kuke le. So I'll say, in other words, they add in, in the document itself that Allah Chalamai, so this was done under the guidance of Ravashi. The idea being, Rabbi Osai, that Allah Chalamai, there has to be something in the document indicating that this based in operated in accordance with the standards of Bate Din, which only use Bate Din of three Dayanam. So that's Rabbi Osai, what comes out of it is really something interesting. Whereas normally Kiyam Shtaros will require three Dayanim, if Halacha Lamaisa, again, 
Three were present for the actual certification, but one died before the signing. Actually, the kiyom, the certification, can proceed, right? They just, with, with the two, Whereas, but it's not really with the two, it's really with the three, but Allah said there has to be some type of verbiage in the signing itself that indicates this was done, kiddas ukidin, this was done in accordance with proper Bayesian protocol. Incredible. It will say Mishnah, fascinating Mishnah. Ha'ishes sha'amra, ishes ish ha'isi, ugrusha ani. Ne'manas, ne'manas, let's listen to this. Woman comes in front of Bayesian. And here's what she says. She says, I was married, but now I'm divorced. I was married, but now I'm divorced. So I said, what's the halacha? Ne'emenes, she's believed. Why? So this is, the, again, another illustration of this principle that we've been using now for the last couple of shiurim, which is, if you come into Beisdin and you provide information that we did not know without you, then what? You are believed to qualify that information as well. They both say, what's the logic of it? It's a migo. What's the migo? What's the migo? You could have said nothing at all. You could have said nothing at all. We would have never known anything different. So a woman comes into Beisdin. She says, I was married, but now I'm divorced. What do we say? What do we say? Okay. Right? In other words, fine. Fine. In other words, we, we, be, we believe you because we did not know we did not know you were married. So, so now that you told us, you gave us the information, right? You, you assured yourself, so to speak, by saying that you are a married woman. Now you permitted yourself by saying that you are a divorced woman. We believe you. We believe you. However, however, if there are witnesses that she was married, and now she says, no, but my husband divorced me, She's not believed. Now we'll say, when we say she's not believed, we mean she's not believed without, without producing some type of proof. In other words, because I will say, in this case, remember again, her status as an HS ish is independently established through Eidos, and therefore her mere word is not enough to change that status. Similarly, Amra Nishbeis Yutar, and it was in this interesting case. She says, I was taken captive but I was not violated by my captors. Ne'emenes, she is believed. Why? Because we also remember again, we had no idea that she was, that she was taken captive. So again, she's, pro she's providing us the information that she was taken captive, therefore she is believed to qualify it. However, And I will say now, However, if there are Edim that say that she was taken captive, but she claims I was not violated. She's not believed, right? They're about to say why? Because remember again, we assume that Stam Shavuya, a regular woman taken captive, is violated by her captors. So if her Shavuya status is independently corroborated, she is not believed by herself to qualify it without some type of edos. So again, I'm about to say same cases. However, if she remarried and then witnesses come, she does not have to leave her husband. So I will say, it is not clear at all what that line of the Mishnah is referring to. The Gemara will discuss it. I will say, here we go. I will say, this is incredible. Amar Rabbi <laughs> Incredible. We've been talking about this for like three months. Right, so now the Gemara says, by the way, by the way, how do we know the concept of Pesha Asr Pesha Hitir? How do, how do I know that idea that if I'm the purveyor of information, I, if I'm the source of the information, I am believed to qualify the information as well? So, Minatara Shinemar, as Biti Nasati Leisha Zeh. Leisha. Well, say, listen to this. This is talking about, this is talking about a father who married off his minor daughter. And remember again, I both say, this is, a, this is a situation where the husband claims that she was not a besula. She was not the basula. So listen to the Pasek. As biti nasati leisha Father says, I have given my daughter to this man as a wife. So the Gemara says, watch this. What's happened? Leish, when the father says, I've given her to this man, asra. She, he, has, he has prohibited his daughter to everyone. Hazeh hitira. To this man, I will say, here's what's interesting. When he says, when the father says, I've given my daughter in marriage, she becomes asura to who? To everyone. Because after that statement, I don't know who she's married to. Then when the father says, Hazer, to this man, she becomes permitted to this man, and Asura to everyone else. So we'll say, interestingly enough, the Gemara is suggesting that's the source of Hapesh Sha'asar 
The father assers her to everyone by saying, I married her off. He doesn't tell us who I married her off. She's asura to everyone. And now he permits her to the man whom he identifies as her husband. Fascinating. To which the Gemara says, I don't understand. Lamalikra. The truth is about to say, you don't need a Pasek for Pesha Asra Pesha Why not? Svarahu. Hu Asra Vuhu Sharile. They both say, Pesha Asra Pesha Hitir is just a Svara. And I will say, in fact, it's a Migo. In other words, and it makes, it makes total, you don't, you don't need a Pasek. You don't need a Pasek. If you are the only source of information and you could have kept quiet and not shared anything, but you choose to divulge, then by definition, we believe your qualifications as well. It's Svara. It's Svara, to which the Gemara says, Elo, kitz you're right. The Gemara says, you're right. So we'll say, it turns out that Pesha Asar Pesha is a Svara, is a Svara, not a Pasak. I what do I use the Pasak for? Cross, listen to this. So it's the Kral Kid Rav Huno, Amarav, Dom Rav Huno, Amarav. We'll say the Pasak is necessary for something else. Minayim la'av shenem on last Saras Bita bin How do I know that a father has the ability to Asar his daughter? In other words, we'll say, what does that mean? How do I know that his father, that a father has the ability Ultimately, again, to answer his daughter to everyone else in the world, to which the Gemara says, Because the daughter says, I, I've given my daughter to a man. In that moment when he says that statement before, before identifying who he's given his daughter to, so what has he done? He has answered his daughter to everyone in the world. Because in that moment before he says, Again, she's answered to everyone. So what do I need ultimately again? To the Haza, so the Gemara says, Mi baile the chit, so we'll say, first of all, look at Rashi, Shneman Lesar's Bito, Kishi Kitana Onara, Shebiodo Lakacha, Kidamino Bagnara Shneswaska, Minaim Shim Amar Kidashtia Laploni, Shunaman Osrala Kol. So we'll say, what this means is as follows. In general, a father is believed to say, I was Makadesh, my daughter, to a particular man. He's believed. Why is he believed to say that? That comes from this Pasig. As Biti Nasati Leish. A father is believed to say, I have given my daughter over in marriage to someone. What do I need the Hazah for? So here we go. I need the Hazah as follows. The Chiditani Rabbi Yona, Tani Rabbi Yona, as Biti Nasati Leish, Hazah, Hazah, Velo So this is very interesting that ultimately, again, the claim of a lack of Besulim ultimately, again, can only come from a husband, cannot come from a Yavam. Okay, interesting. Tan Rabbanan, Ha'isha Sha'amra, Isha, Eishas, Ish, Ani. We'll say, here we go. More cases. A woman says, I was married. So we'll say, so first of all, very exciting sugya, very exciting sugya. We actually just learned the source of Pesha Asar, La Pesha Heter. We thought it was a Pasek. It turns out it's not a Pasek. What is it? Svara. Svara, which I will say, I think is, has been the premise that we've been operating on or with since the beginning of this sugya. Here we go. Ha'isha Sha'amra, Eishas, Ish, Ani. V'chazra, Va'amra, Penuya, Ani. Ne'amenes. So the Gemara says, if a woman says, I'm married, she claims I'm married, and then she says, no, I'm single. She's believed. Again, that seems to be Pesha Asra Pesha Heter. To which the Gemara says, one second. V'hashavi anafshe lechatiche di isura. The Gemara says, we learned, again, the concept that you could change your own status. When she says, I'm a married woman, the Gemara says, she conveys upon herself or confers upon herself a particular prohibited status. So why is she just permitted to just flippantly change that? To which the Gemara says, Amrav Barafuna kigon shenasna amasla ledvarah. Oh, what's happening over here? They will say where she gives an amasla. Amasla is an excuse or an explanation. Where I will say what's happening over here? She makes the claim, I'm a married woman, and then she turns around a little bit later and she says, No, I'm single. And we say, Hey, what's up? What's up? And she explains. She explains why she said what she said. In that case, she is believed. So the Gemara says, Tanya Namech Abraisa that supports this. Amra Eishes Ish Ani, the Chazra Va Amra Penuya Ani, Einar Ne'emenes. If a woman says, I'm a married woman, and then she turns around and she says that I'm single, she's not believed. Because once she says she's a married woman, she's conferred upon herself a status of Isser. She's not then believed to simply say, no, I'm not married. However, Vimnasna Amasla, first white line on the bottom, Lidvareha, if she provides an excuse, for or an explanation of her words, then she's believed. I will say the Gemara gives a story. Listen to this. Well, let's listen to this. There was once a very beautiful woman. And she was beautiful. In other words, she looked beautiful. And she also was chashiv. She had status. What happened? So I'll say, so what happened? 
So there were a number of men who were obviously very interested in her. And they were pursuing her. And she kept saying to these men, oh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I'm Mikudesh, I'm already betrothed. I'm already betrothed. A, a little while later, right? Right, Liyamim, Amda Bekidshes Atzma. I will say, by the way, you could see this. Also, the Lashon over here is very interesting. Kidsha as Atzma. Kidsha as Atzma means what? She decided who she was going to become Mikudeshes to. This was an assertive woman, Bar Hashem, right? So, in other words, no one was being Mikadesh her. She was allowing herself, right? Kidsha Asma. She was giving herself in Kiddushin. So, the point over here is a little while later, we hear that she has Kiddushin. So what's going on? So the Gemara says, Amrullah Chachamim Mara Isla Soskein. Chacham said, what's going on? How could you, how could you become Mikudeshes now? You told people before that you were already Mikudeshes. Amrullah Hem, Betchila Shabbat Olayan Hashem Shenem Muganim, Amarti Mikudeshes. Before the suitors, the guys who were coming to me, were not worthy husbands. Were not worthy husbands. So I didn't want to hurt anyone's feelings or say, you know, or decline the Shiluch. So what did I say? What did I say? I said, I'm, I'm the Kudashas. Sorry, taken. Taken already. However, But now, Baruch Hashem, that I better prospects, right? Better, right? Better Shiduchim. So now I was, I, I allowed myself to become betrothed. Kidash I was Mekadish myself. So I will say, so, so the Gemara says, the Gemara says, Halcha. So Vizu Halacha. So I will say, so this is an example of an Amasla, where a person says something, then changes, right? person says something which sets their status a certain way, then says the opposite. If they give an amasla, if they give an explanation, then we accept the qualification. And this, I say, this halacha of acha, the sarabira went ahead and brought before the chum in usha, if indeed she gives an amasla for her words, Ultimately, again, ultimately, she is believed. So we'll say, and that seems to be the halacha lemaisa. So we'll say, we have a lot of different things happening over here. So first of all, we have hapesha asar hu hapesha hitir. Right? So we'll say, so remember again, hapesha asar hapesha hitir, we'll say, is you give, you give information, you're believed to qualify that information. That's case one. Now we'll say, that's different than the case we're dealing with over now. What are we dealing with over now? What are we dealing with now? Where a person says one thing, and then what? And then what? Says the opposite. So I both say, Pesh Asar Pesh Shehetir is, a woman says, I was married, but now I'm divorced. Now I'm divorced. Those are not contradictory things. Those are not contradictory things. That's a, that's, that's a narrative. That's a narrative. So if she's the one who introduces the information to us, she's believed to qualify. Pesh Asar Pesh Shehetir. How do we know that? Svara. Svara. Case two, Rebbe says, a woman shows up and she says, I'm married. And then she says, I'm single. I'm single. Now she's saying contradictory things. It's contradictory things. So I will say, in general, if a person says contradictory things, what do we do with the contradiction? We do the contradiction? We, we, we ignore it. In other words, we say, no. Shavya nafshe chatiche di isura. What you said first established your status, and you can't just simply flip that switch off. However, if the person provides an amasla, an explanation as to why now they're, 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 they're providing contradictory statement about themselves, then what? then they're believed. So a woman says, I'm married. And then she says, I'm single. We say, no, no, no. You said you're married. That's it. We're not listening to the fact that you're single. I, if you, now, if you come along, but you say, no, no, I said I was married because at the end of the day, I was getting, I was getting propositioned by these guys for, for, for marriage and not, not suitable suitors. So I just wanted them off my back. That's why I said I was married, but I'm really not married. I'm, oh, okay. That, that we can believe. And I'm asla. But says, Amrat Tmeya Ani, the Chazar ve Amrat Tahora Ani Mao. Both say, interesting case. What happens if a woman says to her husband, I'm Anida. I'm Anida. I'm Tmeya. And then she turns around and she says, I'm Tahora. I'm Tahora. I'm not Anida. What's the halacha? So Amr Lei, Af Bizu, Im Nasna Amasla Amud Beis, Lidvareha Neamenes. Okay, so both say, again, it's the same halacha. If she gives an Amasla, if she gives an explanation, in other words, so you're saying you're Anida, now you're saying you're not Anida. Okay, so just what, what's going on? So if there is a legitimate explanation for this, then Eina Achinami, that's fine. So Tanamine Arbaim Zimnin. So I will say, Shmuel learned this halacha 40 times, 40 times. The Gemara says, Vafilu Hachi lo Avad Shmuel Uvda Benafshe. Shmuel did not accept this halacha when it came to his own circumstances. 
The Rebbe will say, what are his own circumstances? If you look at Tosis, this is actually very interesting. Tosis says, Rabbi Nuchanan HaHevi Yerushalmi, Shmuel Baal is that kuke le'isisei. So Shmuel wanted to have relations with his wife. Amr le, Tmei Ani. She said, I'm Anida. Ulamachar Amra, Tahora Ani. Tomorrow, the next day, she said to her husband, I'm Tahora. Amr la etmol, Tmei Yoma. I'm sorry, Amr la etmol, Tmei Yoma, Din Tahora. So he says, what's going on? Yesterday you said you're Anida. Today you're not Anida. Amr le, Esmo la havis bichila kihahi. What did she answer? She said, I was tired. I was tired. So when I was tired, I just thought it was too, too difficult to get into an explanation. So I just said, I'm Anida. I just said, I'm Anida. Okay? <laughs> I was like, I just want to tell you something amazing. I want to tell you something amazing. I was like, what a Musar Haskell. Shmuel's life is an open book to us in Ksuvah's Daf Chaf Beis Amad Beis. I was like, after Mea Ve'esrim Shana, we go up to Beis Din Shalmala. And I would say, what are you thinking right now? Ah, oh, Shmuel, like, why, why did I have to learn this about your intimate life? Right, you know, like, this is like, this is like, I would say, after 120, life is an open book. Life is an open book. And in front of the based in Shalmala, in front of the based in Shalmala, every detail of my life is read and discussed and talked about from the most mundane to the most intimate, and it's all there. And it's all there. My family's there, and everyone else is there, and everyone's late. It's there. I was saying, it's such a Musra has skill to make sure that we lead lives, that if someone reads about it, whether it's in Tosis, on Ksuvah, Staff, Chaf, Beis, and the Beis, or it's in the Beis, and Shalmala, I'm okay with people hearing about the life that I've led, that I have nothing to hide. Again, it's, it's, it's hard. I, I don't know that any of us can measure up to the metric of nothing to hide, but at least let me to be cognizant of the fact that everything we do and the way we live is an absolute open book. Perhaps not in the front of others, but Lamai says certainly in front of HaKadosh Baruch Hu. To be cognizant of that and to make sure that we're living lives that when someone reads our narrative, we'll be proud of the story we've created. So Shmuel over here, so, she, so, so Mrs. Shmuel says to her husband, I was tired, I was tired. So instead of getting into it, again, I just said, I'm Tamea. Just said, I'm Tamea, but I'm really not Anida. So the Gemara says, so ultimately, again, so finished osis, asa shal rab, so Shmuel asked the shayla of rab, so can you imagine this? Shmuel comes to rab, he tells him the whole story, he says, Nusa, what's that loch, huh? Amr lei, im nasna amasla dvara and amenes. This is a case of amasla. This is a case where she's explaining why she said what she said. And therefore, what's Rabbi say? And therefore, aloch alamaisa, technically, Shmuel, your wife is permitted to you. Rabbi say, the idea of Shmuel, Shmuel understood the halacha, for whatever the reason, he was uncomfortable accepting the halacha for himself. He was uncomfortable accepting the halacha. Therefore, again, again, I will say, so again, to be clear, the halacha is a halacha lemaisa, right? That a person is believed to flip-flop on status if they give an explanation for that change. But Shmuel himself didn't accept it. So I will say, so therefore, again, halacha lemaisa, Shmuel, what Rashi says over here, Rashi says, lo avad Shmuel ofdu benafsheh, Shmuel would not be with his wife ultimately again until she went to the mikvah. Until she went to the mikvah. See, he did not accept the amasla for himself for whatever the reason, but we would accept the amasla. Listen to this case. Two witnesses say a husband died. Two witnesses say a little bit. Two witnesses say the, the husband didn't die. Two witnesses say the husband divorced his wife. Two witnesses say he did not divorce his wife. So I will say, so what does the woman do in these situations? Harizo lotinase. Ultimately, again, she shouldn't remarry. She shouldn't remarry because halacha lamaisa, we have contradictory testimony. Ve'emises loteitse. However, if halacha lamaisa, she did remarry, she did remarry, she does not have to leave her second marriage. Okay? So the Gemara says, Rav Nachem Bayosi Omer, Teitse. Rav Nachem Bayosi says, absolutely not. If she did remarry in a situation like this, she has to go ahead and leave her second husband. Rabbi Nachman Bayosi. So Rabbi Nachman Bayosi said, "A masay ani omer teitze." But when do I say that she has to leave her second husband? Bizman shabo edim va'acher kach nises. That's in a case where what? Where what? The witnesses first came, and she married anyway. In other words, she. Sh- in other words, we'll say. So, so we'll call her Rachel. We we'll call her Rachel. Rachel's married to Ruvain. Two witnesses show up and say Ruvain's dead. Two witnesses show up and say Ruvain's not dead. 
she should not remarry. If she remarried, in that case, from Menachem Bar Yossi says, she has to leave her husband. But again, if she remarried and then only afterwards, so we'll say, let's say Rachel's married to Ruvain. Two witnesses show up and say what? And say Ruvain died. Why? She has remarried. And then afterwards, two witnesses show, show up and say Ruvain's alive. Ruvain's alive. In that case, even Rabbi Menachem would agree she does not have to go ahead and leave her husband. So we'll say, let's analyze this. I understand how this case works. So we'll say, here's what it sounds like. Here's what it sounds like. Rachel is married to Ruvain. Witnesses show up. Two witnesses say that, that Ruvain died. And what happens? And what happens? So now, according, it sounds like according to the Tanakhama, according to the Tanakhama, ultimately, again, um, Haris, I'm sorry. Um, no, let, let's go with this. So two, 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 witnesses, two witnesses show up. Okay, let, let's... Let's, let's go with let's go let's go with the Chachamim first. Just keep it easy. Keep it easy. So two witnesses say Ruben died. Two witnesses say Ruben didn't die. Rachel gets married anyway. Rachel gets married anyway. What do the Chachamim say? What do the Chachamim say? Lo say. Fine. She shouldn't have gotten remarried. But if she gets remarried, she doesn't have to leave her second husband. The Gemara says, I don't understand. How, how could that be? Michdi tre utre. Rabbi say this is a case of two witnesses against two witnesses. And haba aleha ba'asham taloi kai. They both say, every single time Rachel is with her second husband, they have to bring an asham taloi. They both say, an asham taloi is a carbon that is brought for a potential infraction of a kari's bearing sin. So they both say, so again, halacha lemaisa, Rachel may be a married woman, so I don't understand, how is she allowed to be with her second husband? To which the Gemara says, Amrav Sheshes kagon shenises le'echad me'edeha. Uh, interestingly enough, what's the case? Who did she marry? It's a little interesting. Who did she marry? One of the witnesses. And I will say, remember, the witness who comes along and says that Ruvain's dead, he has no suffix. He has no suffix. So therefore, again, he has no din of asham taloi because he's absolutely certain that, that, that Ruvain is dead. That's fine, the Gemara says. What about he gufa ba asham taloi? What about she herself? What about Rachel herself? Rachel herself will be subject to an asham taloi, to which the Gemara says, ba omeres barili. What's the case, Rabbi Osai? Where she says, I know my husband is dead. Now, how could she know for sure her husband is dead? Look at Ashiba Omer is Barili. Ain libi nokfi, she Barili ilu haya kayam haya ba. Rabbi Osai, because I know that if my husband was alive, he would have come home already. The fact that he didn't come home and the fact that there's Eidus also, that he's dead, tells you that Allah Chalamai says he's dead. Therefore, Rabbi Osai, that's why, that's why even though you have two opposing witnesses who say that he's still alive, Ultimately, again, in these very specific cases, where she marries one of the witnesses, and she says again, so therefore the husband is sure that Reuven is dead, Rachel knows that Reuven is dead, there's no Asham Taloi. Am Rabbi Yochanan, Shnaim Omrim Meis, or Shnaim Omrim Lo Meis. So Rabbi Yochanan says like this, if two witnesses say that Reuven's dead, two witnesses say that Reuven's not dead. Hare zu lo Ultimately, again, she should not marry. Okay, that's two verses two. She shouldn't remarry. However, the Gemara says, "Ve'em nises lo However, again, if she did get remarried, if she did get remarried, she does not have to leave her second husband. Conversely, shtaim omrim diskarsha, shtaim omrim diskarsha. Two witnesses say that Ra- that Ruben divorced Rachel. Two witnesses say they didn't divorce. Harezo lo tinase. Rachel should not get remarried. Ve'em nises teitse. Ooh. Well, say, listen to this. So Rabbi Yochanan has a distinction in Rabbi Yochanan's version, or Rabbi Yochanan's version, two verses two in a case where Ruvain died, she shouldn't get remarried, but if she did, she doesn't have to leave. But conversely, two verses two in a case of divorce, two witnesses say that Ruvain divorced Rachel, two witnesses say that Ruvain did not divorce Rachel, Rachel shouldn't remarry. But if she did, if she did, what's that Rachel? She has to leave husband number two. Wow, the Gemara says, Why is there a distinction between the first case and the second case? To which the Gemara says, Rabbi Yitirgama Be'ed Echad. Interesting. What are we talking about? We'll say, what's the case over here? The case is where you don't, you don't have two Eidim. Rather, what do you have? What do you have? An Eid Echad. So the Gemara says, listen to this. Eid Echad Omer Meis Heminu Rabbana Kebe Tre. Well, so you know what, we're going, to stop. we're going to stop over here for today. We'll pick up a Mirat Hashem with the singer. Well, so remember, again, tomorrow is Rosh Chodesh. So Mirat Hashem, we begin at 5.45. We're going to be perfect. We're going to catch up. Mirat Hashem, we're totally on track. Let's well, say incredible Gemara, incredible Sukkot tomorrow. Shkoyach.